wants into the content game? Music streaming services. Spotify announced the development of 12 original series, and the programming looks strong, including a documentary series covering pivotal music industry moments and Rush Hour, a Russell Simmons project chronicling the progress of two hip hop artists. And Taint Just Music. To expand their brand, Spotify is also in planning stages for a comedy show and an animated show. With 75 million subscribers, Spotify wants to increase the 30 million or so who are currently paying for uninterrupted streaming, staking its ground as competition for the likes of Netflix and Hulu. While earlier this year, Apple Music seemed likely to pose stiff competition for the Swedish company, Spotify says, if anything, Apple has drawn more users to Spotify simply by raising awareness of streaming across the board. According to Spotify's VP of Sales, Jonathan Forster, it's hard to build an industry on your own. So thanks, Apple! For now. According to Bloomberg, a revamped version of the Apple Music app should be popping out this fall, so the symbiotic aura boosting may yet turn into a bloody melee. Or maybe not. Spotify wants a piece of the video ad pie, and since digital ad revenue is expected to reach $13.3 billion in 2020, there will probably be more than enough pie to go around. Workspace feeling claustrophobic? Office snacks have lost their charm? and that intern's ungodly chat notifications make you feel like you're dying in a casino. But before you punch some guy named Kevin, consider spending two weeks away at Digital Content New Front. The 10-day conference in New York City doubles as somewhat of a video vacation for marketers, featuring a digital smorgasbord from VR to social media. This year at the event, it was clear the era of esports has most certainly arrived as Activision Blizzard showcased the MLG.TV enhanced viewing experience to advertisers for the first time. The technology delivers an HD video stream with an algorithmic system, providing viewers match statistics, up-to-the-minute leaderboards, and situational insights based on the competition they're watching. The conference also saw somewhat of a state of the union for the TV industry. Of the marketers surveyed in the Interactive Advertising Bureau's video ad spend study, 72% said they plan to start moving funds out of TV and into digital video advertising. And of course, the wonderkind of VR made an appearance at the conference as major publishers and platforms started stepping hard in the virtual direction. Yes, this year new fronts showed us that the marketing world is flexing, pivoting, and evolving, perhaps more than ever. What does it all mean, though? No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Pack a parka and get ready to game. Blizzard Entertainment has been seeding quite the marketing maelstrom across the video game universe over the past several months, all leading up to next week when Overwatch finally makes landfall. The highly anticipated game is a first-person shooter or... FIPS, if you don't know what acronyms are. For Blizzard, a publisher best known for wowing the world with Warcraft, it's their first foray into the shooter genre and their first new franchise in 17 years, which is enough time to conceive, birth, and raise a human to legal driving age. Although the gigantic dork in my heart would have loved to see a Blizzard Dairy Queen mashup, the game publisher opted to partner with Taco Bell and Razor instead, the old chalupa and headset approach. Other rollouts include a BuzzFeed personality quiz, a Pixar quality animated short, and an open beta hosted on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Their best promotion by far, though, came at PAX East, where Overwatch filled the streets with branded Ubers. Give me a Pepto-Bismol pink Polaris slingshot, and I ain't even mad about the surcharge. Facebook came under fire this week with a report that they had actively suppressed conservative news in their coveted trending section, a feed that everyone and their mother looks at. And apparently, their mother is an outraged Republican. Former news curators for the social media giant blew the whistle on the alleged unethical practices. According to Gizmodo, the ex-employees were told to inject news items that were not particularly newsworthy and suppress items critical of Facebook. The report raised concerns that the platform might be contradicting its very own mission statement for the trending section seen here. As you can see, personal biases of supervisors did not make the list. In response to the whistleblower's allegations, Zuckerberg fired back, we have found no evidence that this report is true. If we find anything against our principles, you have my commitment that we will take additional steps to address it. He went on to announce that he'll be inviting leaders from across the political spectrum to share their points of view on the issue, promising to work to keep the platform as open as possible. That was a good statement, Zuck. But the frenzy hath already been whipped, prompting fundamental questions about gatekeeping news content. This isn't the first time Facebook has been accused of unethical data use. In 2014, they took heat for manipulating the feeds of almost 700,000 people to see how users reacted to overwhelmingly positive or overwhelmingly negative posts. When a platform seamlessly infiltrates your life, it's slight shifts like these when you get to see the translucent behemoth. Regardless of their intentions, Facebook, like all companies, has its own perspective and its own agenda. It's easy to forget that, and that fact is a little terrifying.